Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the last original dinosaur sculpt from Papo this year. It's this, the Papo Sticky Moloch. Now let's take it back to a year ago when the 2020 line was first revealed. The Giganotosaurus came stomping onto the scene, absolutely flabbergasting the community and absorbing most of the attention for the new sculpts. The Chilesaurus generated some buzz given how obscure it was, and then the Megaloceros was also a pleasant surprise for many. But if there was one figure that had the potential to be the dark horse among the group, it was this Stiggy Moloch. It was the one figure that really just sort of came and went with the reveal, lost amidst the uproar against the Giganotosaurus. I'll admit, I too got swept up in the controversy and intrigue of the other models, but as time went by for me, it became the one that I was most intrigued to see in hand. It appeared to have the most natural pose of the bunch, the paint scheme seemed to be very well done, and the detail, as usual, looked amazing. But time kept ticking by, and it wasn't until late this year that this figure finally started to show up, which is typical for Papo. They, their line usually trickles out throughout the year, and I suspect further delays were the result of the global situation. However, I think all of that waiting really added to my initial disappointment. When I first saw in-hand photos of this thing, I honestly thought it was a knockoff I was looking at instead of a legitimate final product. The active pose had been reduced to yet another squatting tripod, and a lot of the detail appeared to be lost to a subpar paint job. There's just, there's no way to sugarcoat it. After seeing in-hand photos of this thing, my excitement for this figure plummeted, and I realized this year was the undeniable worst performance from Papo in regards to original offerings. But it is Papo, and since I don't own any other Stiggy Moloch models, I decided to pick it up anyway and just pray that it looked better in person. So I ordered mine in from Everything Dinosaur, and when it arrived, I found that I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Don't get me wrong, it's still very much a letdown of a figure. We're going to talk about why, but I wanted to provide some context to my upcoming lukewarm review. So here we go, let's talk about this Stiggy Moloch. Taking a look at the face, the first thing that stands out to me here are the eyes. Papa went and gave this figure sort of bovine eyes, which is very fitting given the appearance and nature of these animals. It's certainly refreshing to see since normally all we get are the yellow eyes with the black pupil, which is something Papo seems to be improving on at least. They gave us some different approaches this year. The second thing you notice is all of the detail. Yes, Papo have not disappointed on their biggest selling point. The detail on the face of this figure is fantastic. The wrinkled skin around the open mouth, all those large scales and clusters of horns on the cheeks and snout of the animal are very crisply sculpted on a relatively small surface to boot. The half dome of Stiggy Moloch as well as the crown of horns looks fantastic. I was a little skeptical at first, but the texture and artistic liberties taken with the keratin sheaths worked out extremely well in favor of this figure, I must say. The beak as well features some great texture and you can see the little tongue sculpted in the open mouth there. So, as per usual, the focal point of this model, aka the head, is wonderfully sculpted. Then as you move down the neck, you can see all of the muscles and tendons flexing as the creature lifts its head about, and I love the sort of dewlap treatment you get in the throat just above the pectoral region. That's a nice detail. Once you hit the midsection, you've got this wonderful hunchback just over the shoulder blades there. I don't know if there's anything to back up that artistic choice, but again, it puts me in mind of bighorn sheep and what have you, which is cool. Unfortunately, you can see the ribs poking through the midsection there, something Papo usually does, but it's particularly troublesome on this model, and we'll get into why later. Once you hit the tail, you can see some subtle folding of the skin around the thigh and the muscle muscles at the base of the tail are prominently featured here. Again, the fine details on this figure are very well done across the board, the folds of skin, the leathery looking scales adorning the entire surface area, all of that looks fantastic. One detail that Papa always does well is the folding skin around the gut, and you can see that here on the left side of the figure before it's obscured by the arms and shoulder as you come back up the neck of the Stiggy and subsequently to that lovely head. The arms of this figure feature a ton of scale detail over the basic forearms and it it may be hard to tell on camera, but the five claws actually have some wear to them, which is an impressive detail on such a small figure. 
The anatomy and the legs of this Stiggy looks great. You've got some beefy thunder thighs flexing up against the bulging calves that feed into those long, slender ankles. The toe claws are painted in the same weathered brown and gray as the finger claws, and the backs of the toes look like a mix between the accurate fleshy padded skin and the stereotypical plate scaling, and I like the look of it, I gotta say. The scale details are also very well handled, and I love the skin striations and wrinkling present here as well, particularly the work on the kneecaps. That looks nice. If we flip the figure over, you can see some great attention to detail in the throat region. The lower jaw featured some nice muscles, and the hanging skin in the throat has a real sense of weight to it. You can see the pectorals are very well defined, and the details down here are just as impressive as on the rest of the figure. Another point of interest is, like the Chilesaurus, this Stiggy Moloch has been sculpted with a awake a slit. Don't worry, it's blessedly clean. You all know that that's not a detail I typically care about, I could take it or leave it, but it is worth noting here because it's something Papo usually don't do. Perhaps this is their way of saying that they are listening to people who question their accuracy, but I think they have bigger things they could focus on over giving their dinos butts. And that makes for a nice segue into my next talking point about the sculpture, which is the accuracy. No surprise with Papo that this really isn't meant to be a scientific model. Heck, if accuracy was even a primary consideration, I don't think this would even be marketed as a Stiggy Moloch, but... If you're wondering if this could be a passable offering, one glaring issue is the overall shape of the torso and tail. I already mentioned the visible rib cage, but in reality, any pachycephalosaur would have a much wider, more barrel-shaped torso, as well as a very fat tail trunk. But if you look at this thing from the top, it's basically just a tapering plane from the flanks and into the tail, which results in an emaciated look for a model of this nature. Granted, I think it's safe to say this is meant to reflect the Stiggy Moloch of the Jurassic World franchise and not the quote-unquote real Stiggy Moloch. And hey, if you're in the market for a Fallen Kingdom style Stiggy and not a scientific model, then I think this one more than does the job, so I'll go ahead and stop nitpicking the accuracy, why don't I? As far as the pose goes, this is another letdown facet of the figure. The stock images and even images from the Papo showcase showed this thing in a largely horizontal pose as it twisted its head and neck and midsection over its right shoulder. Whereas the movement has been preserved in the final product, the bipedal pose was not, and this Stiggy is yet another squatting tripod figure from Papo. Honestly, it's not nearly as offensive as some of the other offerings have been, and I can almost see it as if the figure is quickly rising off the ground after it was at rest, or is suddenly turning while rearing up and forcing its tail downward, or perhaps taking a hit from another dome skull in the flank and it's kind of just curling from that impact. That, 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 that'd be a cool idea if they had a more bipedal one to pose up against it. But it's just not nearly as appealing as the stock images in my eyes. You can see it's still suffering from that splay-legged posture that all of Papo's original dinos this year showcased to some extent. And yeah, if it was a one-off, I might be more forgiving of it. Overall, I will say that I don't think this pose is as distracting or detracting as the pose on the Giganotaurus but it isn't as strong as what we were originally promised. In terms of the overall proportions, this is something Papo had issues with on their Giga and Chilesaurus, but I will say this one seems to have fared quite well. Nothing seems bulbous or stubby, so props for that, I guess. Man, that feels like something I shouldn't even need to address, but here we are, I guess. But then we get to the real problem of this figure. Like I said, I could swallow the pose. There are some interesting sort of scenarios you can come up with in regards to that positioning. But the real problem with this one, in my eyes, is the paint job. It just crashed and burned on this figure. Just some general information. You can see the model is cast in a sort of waxy tan color with a sort of mint green airbrushing along the dorsal region and banding the tail and face. You've also got a little bit of peach coloration in the throat, which I think makes for some great breakup. The horns feature some nice weathering in the form of a mix of colors from gray to caramels, and they have a nice lived-in look. I don't care for the high gloss on them, but I think that's a result of the type of plastic the rest of the body is cast in, which looks like it's trying to give off the semi-translucent and glossy appearance of flesh. Papo have utilized this type of material in the past, but for whatever reason, I think this one is just less successful in its attempt. And honestly, I think it all goes back to the final paint job and how it was all applied. I like the palette on this figure, and it is nice to see they tried to do their own thing rather than just going with the easy Fallen Kingdom colors, but the issue is that the paint feels so surface 
level. There's no depth to it, no deep wash to make all the sculpted details pop like in the promo image, no dry brushing on top of it to highlight or emphasize certain sculptural element. It all just feels like it was plopped on, like they just airbrushed on a thin layer of green over the base plastic and called it a day, and as a result, it doesn't look at all organic like many of Papo's paint jobs have managed to. It is begging for some breakup in the forms of washes or dry brushing, and I mean, I knew there were going to be differences between promo images and final product. I always expect that, but this one really just came up short, especially when compared to some of the other lovely paint jobs we got this year. The Giga is a terribly posed figure, but the paint job is intricate and well applied with layers of color and modeling. The Chilesaurus is vibrant and eye-catching with complex patterning and a slew of different colors. This one is just green or tan with none of the same level of artistic appeal that was captured in the prototype image, and that makes it look cheap. Honestly, it's probably one of the biggest letdowns I've ever experienced from Papo in regards to color. Borderline false advertising, which is problematic to say the least. And I got this shortly after it was released. This isn't one of those situations where the mold is old and less is going into the paint apps. This is a brand spanking new figure. I can't imagine how rough this thing is going to look down the road. Anyway, for a quick measurement, this Stiggy comes in at three and a half inches from the tip of the curled tail to the tip of the beak, or about nine centimeters. Bear in mind, it would be a bit longer if you measured along the curve of the back, but you can see that it also comes in at around three and a quarter inches off the ground, or just past eight centimeters tall. So it's not really a big figure. The paint job is underwhelming, and there's no point of articulation. Why does this thing cost as much as it does again? Is it a material thing? Or how complex the mold was with the horns? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, here it is with the Papo Paki Cephalosaurus, and they're pretty close in terms of their size, yet I recall the Papo Paki being like 10 bucks when I first got mine. I will say, I know I was just razzing the paint scheme on the Stiggy Moloch, but I guess it does look to be a little more lifelike and naturalistic in its application when compared to the Pachycephalosaurus, so maybe it's not so bad if that's what you like to see in a model. Next up, let's get everyone in for a family photo. We've got the Safari LTD Draco Rex, the Papo Stiggy Moloch, and of course this year's Safari LTD Pachycephalosaurus. A wonderful surprise of a figure, and you can see now that you've got a nice little growth cycle of the Pachycephalosaurus before you. Here's hoping that Safari decides to make a Stiggy Moloch in one of their upcoming lines so that you can get the whole trio from them, because I'll be honest, this Papo Stiggy Moloch looks like an imposter when posed with the other two. Next up for comparisons, here it is with the classic Batat Pachycephalosaurus. Love that little figure. It's probably my favorite of the species, and even though this isn't a very useful size comparison, given the elusive nature of that figure, I still wanted to bring it in because those bat tats are always so charming to look at. And for a final related comparison, here it is with the blind bag mini Stiggy Moloch from Mattel's Jurassic World toy line. I don't currently have an unboxed full-sized figure of that species, but given how Jurassic World has bolstered Stiggy Moloch's notoriety, I wanted to be sure and bring in at least one Mattel creation for a size comparison. And now for some Papo comparisons, I wanted to kick it off with the Dilophosaurus because that one seemed to be done in a similar style to the Stiggy Moloch, with the waxy, skin-like plastic being utilized for casting, but this highlights my earlier point about how I think Papo have done this better in the past. The Dilophosaurus has that lovely sheen that reminds me of snake skin, and the paint job feels like it's actually part of the figure rather than just sitting on top of it. I also think the Stiggy Moloch looks... I don't know, greasy in comparison here for some reason? The point is that any way you want to slice it, I think Papo have done similar work better in the past. Next up, here it is next to the recently reviewed, also new for 2020, Papo Chile Source, and you can see just how much more complex and interesting the paint job is on that figure when compared to the likes of the Stiggy Moloch. It also features an articulated jaw, appears to be fairly similar in terms of size, and is cheaper than this Stiggy, so yeah. 
do what you want with that. Then of course, it's everyone's favorite, Papo's 2020 Giganotosaurus, and yeah, I'm not gonna get off topic here, all I'm going to say is the Stiggy pose is not nearly as horrendous as it could be, all things considered, and hopefully this gives you an idea of the size you can expect from this Stiggy Moloch or Giganotosaurus. This comparison also further highlights my earlier point about the disparity in paint styles between these two. And that was the 2020 Papo Stiggy Moloch. Overall, I don't think this is a bad figure per se, but the perfect word to describe it would be... Underwhelming. So many of the wonderful aesthetics from the promo images were lost, both in terms of the pose and paintwork. And to add insult to injury, the figure runs in at right around $20, which, if you ask me, is way too much for such a small and misleading product. If the promo images had indicated that this would be yet another tripod from Papo with a more honest paint job, then I probably wouldn't be as upset. I expect a drop in quality from what we're shown to what we actually get. I fully do. And I'm even willing to forgive Papo if they had to cut further corners to meet deadlines, given how crazy of a year it's been. But what I ultimately cannot forgive is the high price point on this one. If it looked just a little bit closer to what we were promised, then maybe... But for what the figure turned out to be, it is without a doubt a discount dino. And that concludes Killer Shrew fans' coverage of the 2020 Papo Dinosaur lineup. I don't intend to get the repaints. I'm a mold completist with this line, not a paint completist. I do get some of the new color schemes, especially if they're an improvement. And I'll be honest, I eyed the Parasaurolophus repaint, but... Like this Stiggy, it seemed to suffer greatly in terms of what we actually got. And no, I'm not getting the glorified elk figure, even though there is a case to be made that that is Papo's best this year. Just some final thoughts on the line in general. It really was a rough year for one of my favorite companies, and fittingly so, I guess, with how cruddy everything else has been. None of these original sculpts stood out to me as fantastic when all was said and done, and whether that's because of poor paint apps or terrible artistic decisions, I certainly hope that Papo takes a long, hard look at what they are doing and course corrects for 2022. I'm sure by now it's already too late for 2021, but we'll see if Papo redeems themselves. Honestly, if we keep getting more of the same from them, I might have to walk away and focus on other brands. At this point, I've accumulated a great collection of Papo figures from across the years that I am proud of, but these three new offerings are certainly among the black sheep of the Papo shelf, and I don't want to keep taking up valuable shelf space with more underwhelming products down the road. If you were to ask me for a ranking, I don't think I could give you one. The Chile Source turned out to be my favorite, but even that one isn't without its shortcomings, and the other two are just complete middle-of-the-road fare, in my opinion. Great sculpts, but weak paint on one, and a downright abhorrent pose on the other. So, here's to hoping that Papo's 2021, along with all of our 2021s, is better than the past year has been. I know 100% that they can be better, and I want to see the old brand that got me into this hobby make a comeback soon. As always, I want to know what you guys think of this model. Do you own it yet? Are you planning on picking it up? What has been your favorite original dinosaur sculpt from Papo this year, and what are you hoping to see? from them in 2021. Hard to believe this video was made before we saw even a tease from them, but here we are. Drop a comment down below, and as always, big thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care out there, and bye bye